Welcome to the Voice of Islam. The Voice of Islam is a weekly radio program organized by the Islamic Council of Jamaica, the umbrella organization for the Muslim community in Jamaica, to propagate the message of Islam, dispel the common misconceptions about Islam, and facilitate a medium to provide the Islamic perspective on topical issues and alternative solutions. You may contact the Islamic Council of Jamaica at 648 nine five four five that's six four eight nine five four five you are listening to the voice of islam before we begin let's take a few minutes to listen to the recitation of verses selected from the final revelation to mankind al-quran <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله يدخل الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات جنات جنات تجري من تحت فيها الأنهار يحلون فيها من أسابر من ذهب ولؤلؤا ولباسهم فيها حرير وهدوء إلى الطيب من القول وهدوء إلى صراط الحميد I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed devil, Satan. Indeed, I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Indeed, Allah, the creator, will admit those who believe in his oneness and do righteous deeds to gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will be adorned with bracelets of gold and pearls and their garments therein will be of silk. And they are truly guided unto goodly speech, and they are guided to his path, the one worthy of all praise. You are listening to the voice of Islam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. There's a place that you may have heard of, or maybe you have never thought of it, but it has been in existence since Adam and Eve were sent down to earth. Before we open the door to talk about the greatest place on earth, I really think that because we mention Adam and Eve being sent down to earth, it then becomes of utmost importance to highlight that in Islam, Adam and Eve were not sent to earth as a punishment of their disobedience to God or Allah. Islam teaches that before the creation of Adam, Allah or the one true God, had announced to the angels that he intends to establish on earth a vicegerent, a representative of God's laws. The intention was always to have Adam and Eve live their lives on earth. But before that could take place, Adam and Eve both had to learn four important lessons. Lesson number one, the purpose of their creation is to obey God and his laws. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have not created the human being and the jinn kind. The jinn kind is another form of creation. And we have not created both these creation except to worship Allah. So the first lesson is that the purpose of their creation is to obey God and his laws. Number two, life will always involve trials or tests. And this was represented in the form of the forbidden tree. Some, sometimes you may say, you know, why did Allah or God create Adam and Eve, place them in paradise and then forbade a tree from them? And this is because within life, it, life will always have trials and tests. So Adam and Eve, they had to learn this lesson. Number three, they will at times fall into disobedience or sin. And this is the nature of our creation. Just like how it's our nature to worship one God, 
It is our nature that we will disobey him time after time. And so number four. So the fourth lesson that was critical for Adam and Eve to learn before they came to earth is that when they fall into sin or when they disobey God, they must turn back to him in repentance. And this is what Adam and Eve did. They repented after, after uh, committing this sin or they asked God for forgiveness. So Allah had depicted this story within the Quran. Allah says, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٌ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Which translates to mean, Then Adam received from his Lord some words and he accepted his repentance. So God taught Adam words of repentance. Adam used these words, these words and asked Allah for forgiveness. And Allah accepted his repentance. Indeed, it is he who is the accepting of repentance, the most merciful. And so God is the one who accept, accept our repentance and he is the most merciful. And Adam, he had to learn this, that if he made a mistake, then he has to turn back. So as Muslims, we believe that Adam did not come to earth as a punishment. But at that time, Adam had to understand that paradise is only attainable through the obedience of God combined with his mercy. So there are two things here, Allah's mercy and our obedience towards him, our obedience towards his laws will get us to paradise. Number two, Adam had to understand that in life there are things that are forbidden and these things would lead to the disobedience of God's law, like the forbidden tree, and we have to stay away from them. Number three, no matter how we try to stay away from the prohibitions of God, we will in some way or form fall into some type of sin. We can, we have the abilities to stay away from major sins. Major sins would be like murder, fornication, adultery, usury. Usury is the involvement in interest, interest-bearing loans. These things are considered major. Um, slandering, bringing, you know, bringing down people's reputation and so on. And talking about people um, behind their backs, about things they do not like. These things are considered major sins so while we can abstain from major sins we it is within our nature that we will fall into some minor sins but when this happens we have to turn back to allah and this is the basis of which adam and eve were sent to earth they were sent to earth after they had learned this and then they were ready to go to earth so back to the first part, you know, as this ties in very beautifully at the opening, at the opening, I mentioned the greatest place on earth has been in existence from Adam and Eve's time. When they came to earth, they built a place that was blessed and a means of guidance for all in existence. This place is no other than the Kaaba. Yes, the Kaaba. This is located in Mecca current day Saudi Arabia. Have you heard of that place? It is the Kaaba. You know, it is normally depicted as a square building or structure covered with black cloth. I mean, you can Google it. K-A-B-A. -A. It is the first place of worship established for the worship of the one true God, referred to in the Arabic language as Allah. Allah meaning the only one worthy of worship. So Allah says about this place, Inna awwala baytin wudi'a linnas lilladhi bibakkata mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen. Indeed, the first house of worship established for mankind, for humanity, was that at Mecca, blessed and a guidance for the worlds. It is such a blessed place as it still stands erected till this day. You know, this is indeed a sign for humanity of God's sovereignty, that he is in control and there is always going to be a place established for his worship. Allah continues in the following verse. You know, this verse that I mentioned, 
were indeed the first place of worship established for humanity. This was this is found in chapter three of the Quran, entitled "The Family of Imran," um, and Imran and and we're going to move on to the following verse. So that is chapter three, verse ninety-seven, and we're going to move on to verse uh, ninety-six, and we're going to move on to verse ninety-seven. Allah continues in the following verse, and He said. In chapter 3, verse 97, Fihi ayatun, bayinatun, maqamu Ibrahim, wa man dakhalahu kana amina. Walillahi ala nasi hijjul bayti man istata'a ilayhi sabila, wa man kafara fa inna allaha ghaniyun anil alamin. Which translates to mean, it is in it are clear signs, you know, such as the standing place of Abraham, and whoever enters it shall be safe. And for Allah from the people is a pilgrimage to the house for whoever is able to find their way there to a way. But whoever disbelieves, then indeed Allah is free from need of this world. And so this verse within itself, so chapter 3 verse 97, really breaks out the discussion. Allah mentions that the establishment of this place provides very clear signs and from among the signs, and this is why this is considered one of the, this is considered the greatest place on earth, because from among the signs is that Mecca is the central point to which all Muslims face whenever they observe their five daily obligatory prayers. It is their direction, and this unifies the entire Muslim world and is the only way of life. You know, Islam is the only way of life wherein all the followers they face one direction when they're praying and this means that every other place of worship is designed to be connected in terms of direction to the first house of allah and you know this is indeed a sign i mean you imagine adam and eve our our four parents they came to earth and they established a place of worship this place of worship is built upon the principles that I mentioned, that we should understand that the purpose of life is that we are created to worship the one true God, Allah. And number two, that our lives involves tests, that we will be tested, and there are things that are considered prohibited. And number three, we will fall some in some way or form, we will fall into sin because none of us, None of us are free from sin. Number four, whenever we fall into sin, we have to go back to Allah. We have to turn back to Allah. We have to repent to Allah and ask him for forgiveness. This is critical. We can't be, we can't be committing sin after sin, day after day, and we're not asking Allah or we're not asking God for forgiveness. So Adam, Adam and Eve, they have established this by establishing this house. No. Up until today, every other house of Allah, every other place of worship for the Muslims is designed to face this place, to face the Kaaba. And this is amazing in and of itself. And so the direction in which the Muslim stands is that he must be pointing or facing towards the Kaaba. The word Mecca within itself, you know, we mentioned that it is that central or that that focal point the 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 word mecca within itself has also been introduced into the english language i mean you can google the meaning of the word mecca and it means like the hub the hub or the central point or the center of something so mecca ultimately is the center around which all prayers are established um, number two um, so we're going back to the verse, you know, verse um, 97, chapter 3 within the Quran, verse 97. One of the second points drawn from this verse is that Allah says, Within this place is the standing place of Abraham, preserved in stone. So Allah says, you know, this, you know, within this place, within the Kaaba, within Mecca, is the standing place of Abraham. And so, preserved in stone, was the standing place of Abraham during the time he was reconstructing the Kaaba. 
So Allah says, and he mentions this story within the Quran. He says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلُ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And mention when Abraham was raising the foundations of the house and with him his son Ishmael, saying, Our Lord, making a prayer to God, all, all, to Allah, Our Lord, accept this from us. Indeed, you are the hearing, the knowing. And so Abraham and Ismail, during their lifetime, they rebuilt the structure of the Kaaba. You know how Christians, um, you know, our fellow Christians, they say that um, they, they sing this song saying we want that old time religion, the religion of Abraham, you know. Well, Allah says in relation to this, and you would find that Abraham's footsteps have been preserved within Mecca when he was reconstructing this house of Allah. You know, Allah says within the Quran about Abraham, he says, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Abraham, which translates to mean Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was one inclining towards truth, a Muslim submitting to Allah, and he was not of those who worshipped many gods. So he was not of those who claim uh, that you have more than one God or that God is divided into many different parts or departments, but rather without that explanation, free from Trinity and God being three in one or free from any other concept, Abraham was established as being one who submitted to one true God. So this is the second point that we can take from this verse. Uh, the third point that we can derive from verse 97, chapter 3, Allah says, Whomsoever enters this place is safe, and so upon the people for the sake of Allah is a religious journey for those who can make it. And so this place for the Muslims is so important and significant to Islam that journeying, traveling to this place during the time of pilgrimage, the time of pilgrimage, by the way, specified days, specified month. It is the last month of the Islamic lunar calendar, the 12th month. It is the month, month referred to as Dhul Hijjah. So if you journey to this place, it is an obligation upon every Muslim that during this, this time, during these number of days, every Muslim, if they have the means to, should make pilgrimage to Mecca. You are listening to the voice, the voice of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings of the Creator be upon you all. I am your brother in humanity, Dr. Sulaiman Tijani, and today we're going to be looking at a very interesting discourse. And it's really a perspective that we feel as Muslims that oftentimes persons do not get to hear, or they don't get to appreciate. And that is the Islamic view on the preservation of life. I mean, what is life? How does Islam view its preservation? We're going to hear that and more coming up uh, this week on The Voice of Islam. You are listening to The Voice, Voice of, of Islam. Islam. So in starting, you know, I believe that by now we are all aware of really what is Islam. You know, but as a reminder, you know, Islam is a systematic way of organizing your life around the worship and the obedience to the creator. So that is a key word here, right? Your life. And this is where I would like for us um, to begin. Now, one of the key things for us as Muslims is that we believe that we were created and we do believe that we were created by Allah, right? By the creator of the heavens and the earth. And when we were created, we weren't left without a manual, without a guide as to how to make the best out of this life. Now think about it. Imagine if you go to one of these computer stores and you buy a laptop. And so the man that you bought laptop from say, hey, listen, 
this laptop did kind of use, you know. So when you get home, you know, clean it up. You say, all right, clean it up, okay. So you get home now and you're looking up and you're wondering, you're going clean. What do you mean by clean the laptop? You can clean it, what that mean? So you're looking for the manual and you find no manual. So you say, well, what do you mean to so the outside that it kind of dirty and thing and use some like a detergent and clean it? People say, wait, you lose a screw, what do you mean? But in the absence of a manual, what people are left oftentimes is to their own vices. And sometimes the way you might analyze a thing and I might analyze a thing is different. It is so critically important that we have means of guidance, that we have means of direction. And so what Islam provides through the Quran, the revelation from the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the statement and teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is that means and that guide. And so you will find that Muslims oftentimes will turn to these two primary sources as a means of this guidance. Now, when we analyze these two sources, ultimately, Islam is about communication and connection to between you as an individual and the creator. No mediator, no between this, between that, none of that. Between you and the creator. And secondly, Islam is a connection and a communication between you and the people around you. So this topic that we want to deal with today, life and its preservation, is we're looking at it from the aspect of one, you and the creator, and then two, you and the people that are around you. So ultimately, Islam really um, is about you and your creator and you and the people around you. You are listening to the voice, the voice of, Islam. of Islam. When it comes to life, the first thing that Islam teaches and that, that, that we think is very important for persons to understand is that life is a gift. Life is a absolute, is an absolute precious gift. You know, when I was doing my obstetrics um, and gynecology rotation, one of the most fascinating things is that you get to understand the level of change, the complexity of events and processes that are going on when a woman is pregnant. And you get to understand that for, firstly, the creator wills it that not everybody, not all women can get pregnant. Some of them struggling, they can't get pregnant. So for the women that get pregnant, this in and of itself is a blessing and a gift. And then there are those women who lose the pregnancy in the first trimester. Some lose it in the second. Some it's as the baby is born that the baby dies. So if you make it through all these complex and rigorous processes, then when you are born, it is an absolute blessing and an absolute gift. And I think oftentimes persons do not focus on the fact that number one, no one else is identical to you psychologically. The energy that you have, your fingerprint, your spirituality, no one is, no one is the same as you. So you are an in, unique being. So number two, we have to understand, we are all mortal beings. So at some point, you and I, we're going to leave this earth. In, a, in, the, in the Quran, the creator of the heaven and the earth, he said, all of humanity is going to taste from death. There's nobody not, 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 not going to die, right? In another verse, the creator, he says, and every one of them, meaning all of us, will appear before him, meaning before God, before the creator of the heavens and the earth, in a lonely state. So we're going to die and we're going to be resurrected and we're going to be questioned for all that we used to do on this life. So we have to understand that one, life is a gift, it's precious, and that we are unique, but we are mortal. We're going to eventually pass away. And so we have to start looking now at how we view life what value we put in um, on life when we realize that we're all here for a short time. So how can we make the best out of this precious gift that we have been given in the short period that we are here? When you understand that your life is a gift, 
then you understand that the person beside you, the person in front of you, the person next to you, their life is also a gift. And so when we now start looking at, well, how do we interact with each other in terms of preservation of life and how Islam view the preservation of life, if we start with the premise that the creator of the heavens and the earth is the one who gave life, then we can understand how it is that we approach its preservation. Firstly, the creator, he says in the Quran, this is chapter 5, verse 32, he says, we prescribed for the children of Israel that whosoever kills another human being without their being guilt or um, of murder or corruption in the land, it's as if that person has killed all of humanity. And whosoever saves the life of one person, it will be as if what? He has saved all of mankind or all of humanity. This is the concept and this is how valuable human life is in Islam. This is how much of a um, this is how much of a priority Islam puts on how we view life and the preservation um, of life. Thank you all for listening to The Voice of Islam, a weekly radio program organized by the Islamic Council of Jamaica to propagate the message of Islam, dispel the common misconceptions about Islam, and facilitate a medium to provide Islamic perspective on topical issues and alternative solutions. Remember, you may collect a free Quran, yes, a free Quran by emailing us sending a text message or visiting any of our locations. Please send in your questions and comments to islamradiojm at gmail.com. That's islamradiojm at gmail.com. Or by text message to 892-1350. That's 892-1350. You may also visit our Facebook page facebook.com slash Islamic Council of Jamaica or find us on Instagram at ICOJ underscore official or you may listen to a past episode on our YouTube channel Islamic Council of Jamaica. You may also visit any of the following locations. Islamic Council of Jamaica, 24 Camp Road, Kingston 4. Masjidul Aziz, Portmore Central Plaza, West Tradeway, Portmore. Masjidul Rahman, Windsor Road, Spanish Town, Islamic Dawa Center, 1 Makati Street, Montego Bay, Masjid al Hakim, 138 Main Street, Ochurios, Masjid al Sabr, Albany, St. Mary, Masjid Hussein, 3 Miles River, Westmoreland, Masjid al Haq, New Green Road, Mandeville, Masjid al Nur, Port Maria, St. Mary, Masjid al Ihsan, West End Road, Negril, Masjid al Taqwa, Newell, St. Elizabeth, Masjid Ibrahim, Riversdale, St. Catherine. Masjid As-Sakina, 26 Miriam Way, Montego Bay. Peace be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum.